Hello everyone, hope you all are doing well. So today we are going to discuss the next answer copy of our aim for agriculture series. So as you all know that we are having aim for agriculture series in which we are having daily answer writing practice and weekly full tests. So today we are going to discuss the copy of day 48. And we have already discussed the copies till day 47. So we will see what were the questions asked and how the student has approached the answer. And by analyzing these types of answers, you can also improve your answer writing. Okay, you can get to know various insights of how to approach the answer, how to structure your answers properly, how to introduce, how to conclude, how to write certain points how to add certain examples, how to add structures, diagrams whenever necessary. So all these things can be very helpful to you. So let's start. The first question is, discuss the harmful effects of indoor pollution in women and children. Okay. So we all know what indoor pollution is. Okay. There are different kinds of indoor pollution. It could be through burning several kinds of fuels, especially in rural areas where the women's huge fuels to burn and lot of smoke is created which is then again inhalated by women which cause several lung diseases and others it causes diseases to children so there are uh, various effects of indoor pollution on women and children we will discuss it first of all women there could be respect uh, respiratory illness such as chronic bronchitis okay there could be problems in eye there could be problems of heart diseases such as hypertension heart attacks there could be diseases related to lung, it could be lung cancer only. Although it can be included here in uh, respiratory illness, uh, uh, in the sub points of respiratory illness because a kind of lung is involved in respiration. We have already discussed that how the cooking fuel of wood, cow dung, which creates a lot of smoke, can be a problem. Pregnant women can face problems such as low birth weight, babies, poor fertile growth. So these are the problems. Now, secondly, what are the effects of indoor pollution on children? It could be also respiratory problems could happen in children. Problems such as pneumonia can happen. Stunted growth is another problem. It can highly impact the children's uh, critical phase of growth and development. Cognitive development can be another problem. Asthma, other problems could be there. So this could be also added in respiratory only because I think asthma is kind of related to its sub point. Through a sub point, you can add it. What could be UA forward? We can promote clean cooking technology such as PM Ujwala Yojana. We can uh, bring such various awareness campaigns. There could be Swachh Bharat Mission focusing a segment of Swachh Bharat Mission can be focusing on indoor cleanliness. Okay. Improved ventilation should be there. Proper chimneys, exhaust windows should be there. Subsidies on making fuel affordable such as LPGs, natural gas. Community based approach. Okay. This could be, these are the things which could be done to aware the women, the children, the rural communities which are at higher risk of danger. So these are some of the common points which the students has very nicely mentioned and written and I hope you liked the answer. As I am discussing the important points only, you can, if you want to read the answers, you can simply pause the video and read each, and read the answers properly and in detail. Now the next question is, Discuss the concept of compensatory afforestation. Discuss its potential and demerits. So we all know what compensatory afforestation is. Suppose there is a forest area and we are felling down that forest or cutting down that forest for some purposes. So for the compensation of uh, these trees which have been felled in the forest, we do afforestation in some other place so that the uh, some effects of environment could be mitigated. So this is which the forest is generated as a compensation of the degradation or cutting down or felling of the trees in some other part is kind of known as compensatory afforestation. And I think the uh, Forest Act 1980 highly mentions it. We have the CAMPA program. We all know that CAMPA or things the student is also mentioned here CAMPA. So these are the things related to compensatory afforestation. So I hope you understood what compensatory afforestation is and its aims have been mentioned to mitigate the environmental impact. Okay, we can conserve biodiversity, carbon sequestration. So these are some of the things which needs to. What are the potential of compensatory afforestation? It can help us in restoring degraded land by doing compensatory afforestation in some areas which are degraded. For example, in Rajasthan, 
near Aravali is anything which are the degraded areas near Marusthali regions. We can uh, this can help in boosting local economy. Okay, especially some okay some community forest is developed through uh, compensatory forestation that can provide employment to rural rural populations that that can provide certain kind of manner forest produced rural populations which can be helpful to them. Okay, can improve ecosystem services. Obviously, uh, forest will act as a filter to clean air. It will enhance soil health. So everything will be uh, will be benefited. But there are certain demerits also. What happens when the uh, first degree? There are two. I am giving you just a concept. First degree forest and second degree forest. Suppose there is a tropical forest in Myanmar. So that is first degree forest. Whenever we cut that forest and then again regrow the forest somewhere else or on that place only, it is second degree forest and it will be not as dense as the first degree forest. The amount of biodiversity will not be as the first degree forest. And suppose another example I am giving, we have Andaman and Nicobar Island, okay. There is a very high quality tropical forest in Andaman and Nicobar Island, very old trees. We are cutting down those trees, okay. And we are planting the trees, suppose somewhere in Jharkhand or somewhere where in Bihar, somewhere in Madhya Pradesh. So those trees will be deciduous, deciduous trees and the amount of biodiversity in this area, which is a deciduous, deciduous forest and the, compared to the amount of biodiversity in this tropical forest will be very much different, okay. The kind of species will be different. The kind of carbon sequestered, the, the amount of carbon sequestered will be also be different. So these things can simply add up to the problem. So this is what the demerits is the artificially created forest or forest created after in through compensatory of forestation couldn't be as complex biodiverse as compared to the primary forests. Okay. For example, I have also mentioned here about Myanmar that replanted trees not that dense. Many places in Myanmar where there were tropical forests previously government has tried to replant those forest trees but they were not as dense to compare to the previous ones so these are the problems conflicts displacements could be a problem failure to replace ecosystem function like carbon storage water regulations these all are the problems okay these are all the issues i hope you can pause and read it now let's move to the next question the next question is how does why does quantitative traits source continuous variations Okay, so we have to first part of the question discuss why quantitative traits source continuous variation and second part we have to discuss the traits used by Mendel in his experiment also discuss the limitations of Mendel's experiment. So why quantitative traits so uh, so uh, uh, continuous variation there are several reasons given by the student it could be through polygenic inheritance you can simply pause that video and read it in detail if you want to examples have been well mentioned it could be due to additive gene action it could be due to environmental influence so all the things have been well mentioned well examples have been also mentioned now mendel traits have been mentioned there are seven contrasting characteristic and by mendel that were seed color seed shape seed color pod shape you all know it but just a revision you can simply pause and revise it pod color flower color flower position so these are the traits contrasting characteristic and by mendel plant height now what are the limitations generally mendel focused on simple traits okay the concepts, the deeper concepts of genetics, the deeper concepts have been not taken into it. It ignored linkage. It is an important point. You should be mentioning this point. It ignored um, uh, linkage. There is no consideration of epistasis. Okay, so these are some of the problems. No knowledge on quantitative trait, quantitative traits. So these are some of the limitations of Mendel's experiment. And again, appropriately concluded. So very well written answer. I hope you have paused the video at several intervals. I am just giving a time to read it again. And read the answers properly. So I hope you like the video. So if you like it, please press the like button. Please do share. And please do subscribe. It takes a lot of hard work to make such videos for you on regular basis. Regular basis, especially videos for you on coffee hard work. And if you like, if you share, if you subscribe, it motivates us to make more such videos for you regularly. So that is all for today. Have a nice day. Thank you.